Jesus Institute in Auburn, Alabama. I'm going to be making a series of YouTube videos where I discuss Man, Economy, and State and also Human Action. If there's any other books that you would like for me to make videos about, please just comment them below. So this is my first video and I really hope that you guys will enjoy it. Okay, so for today's discussion, I'm going to be using the first volume of Human Action by Ludwig von Mises, and I'm also going to be using the study guide by Dr. Robert Murphy, and also I'm going to mention a few points that were made by Dr. Gordon during the lectures that he made for the Mises Institute, and they have a whole online learning program that I'll link below if you want to have access to those videos. In the first chapter, The Fundamentals of Human Action, uh, Ludwig von Mises makes a few points um, that I just wanted to mention and briefly discuss. So first he explains that all humans act and he calls this praxeology. So the science of human action is praxeology and he calls economics, which is the science of exchange, catalactics. But one point to be clear on is that praxeology is not a method. The method that praxeology uses is deduction. So the main axiom is that all humans act, and then from that axiom we deduce other propositions. And he mentions that there was the old Greek philosophies of hedonism that also discussed happiness as, you know, one's own personal happiness as the highest attainment, what all humans are trying to achieve. And he discussed that over the centuries, these writing, you know, the, the works of these old authors was misinterpreted to mean that humans only seek sensorial pleasures, you know, physical pleasures, but actually Mises says that these old Greek authors, when you do go and you read them, they really specifically clearly say that it's each individual's own happiness. I'm not going to go too far into praxeology because Prax Girl has a lot of really good videos on praxeology and I'll link her YouTube below so you can spend some time looking at her videos. First he mentions tautology, and tautology is where the sentence doesn't add any new information. So he gives an example that man's unique aim is to attain happiness. And he says this is a tautology. So I just wanted for you to maybe think about why this would be a tautology. Okay, so this is a tautology because in the part man's aim, we have the notion that all men act in order to achieve happiness. Okay, one thing that I wanted to discuss, and I really hope that you guys discuss it below, is this argument that Mises makes. He says that science will never be able to answer all of our questions. Like the human, the human ability to answer questions and to have knowledge is limited. And he says that maybe one day we will be able to figure out that all of our thoughts are caused by a mechanical process. That, that um, different psychologist or psychoanalysis uh, scientist will, psychoanalysis, will be able to tell that every single instinct thought feeling, you know, that I have is related to a bodily process and it's, it's all physical process. So he, he's arguing that right now we don't have that information so we're going to rely on this theory of methodological dualism until we have more information. And Mises mentions this question of what is the real relationship between mind and body a lot in his literature. So I think that it's a very interesting topic to discuss. There's not a lot of work on this field because metaphysics has basically been considered a science of you know smoke and mirrors for the past 100 to 200 years so nobody really asks these types of questions anymore but I think that it's quite interesting um, to think about if we do have methodological dualism if that really is the appropriate way to deal with it that we have reason and free will which allows us to make our own decisions so we cannot be predicted 
such as atoms would be in physics. In metaphysics, you know, the question was, what is the ultimate cause of everything? You know, they were asking questions like, um, uh, questions about God and questions about our purpose in life. And Mises is saying that praxeology doesn't go that deep. All that we're trying to understand is the reality that, you know, we're living in right now, which is that humans have subjective valuations and that we're doing exchanges with each other. So Mises is not trying to go deeper than that with questions about the ultimate purpose of life. You know, he, he's not making value judgments about what the ultimate purpose of life is. So he mentions at the end, if the ultimate purpose of life was to be in a permanent vegetative state, such as some of the Buddhist doctrines have espoused, for example, that we should meditate all day um, until we pass into enlightenment, which might be death in the physical form, but a higher stage of enlightenment in, I guess, in the soul or in the, in the mental capacity. Um, Mises is saying that in that case, praxeology would not be relevant because praxeology is dealing with exchange between individuals. So if our whole point is just to kind of, you know, or I guess that they're more like, I don't know, if, you know, if the whole point of life is just to be, to just kind of be born and then to die, you know, by starving yourself to death while during a meditation, praxeology wouldn't really be relevant. But he says that since we look around us and we see people exchanging, then praxeology is a worthy science. And he gets into arguments against praxeology in the next chapter. So if you want to learn more about that, I hope that you guys will subscribe and stay tuned. Okay, so I hope that all of you enjoyed this video. And now, since I want to get a lot of subscribers and I want to get more people interested in Austrian economics, I'm going to have a little competition. I want to ask the question, does rationality in the first chapter, Mises discusses rationality, and I want all of you to write below if rationality applies to the Mises, to, to the Mises, if rationality applies to means or if rationality applies to ends. Okay, so in order to be entered into this raffle, you have to comment below. You can comment anything you'd like and you need to subscribe to my channel and if you do those two things you'll be eligible to win a gift certificate to the Mises Institute and with that gift certificate you can buy like a wonderful book so definitely go ahead and subscribe and I hope to see all of you next time heteronominous heteronomina heteronomous hetero heteronomous heteronomous privilege to allow a monopoly that ownership leads to intellectual poverty and unintended consequence of governmental lobbying i'm into freedom go ahead and copy me